A warning for the incoming Prime Minister this morning. Ratings agency Fitch is urging the National Party to stick to its 2027 surplus promise and avoid any, quote, slippage, which could push the date out further once again, as it was many times under Labour. Party leader Christopher Luxon made the promise to get the books back in black by 2027, but also promised $14 billion in tax cuts, for which some critics claimed new revenue measures may not cover. Plus, he's currently negotiating with a party that demanded a $3 billion gr provincial growth slush fund last time they sat around the dealer's table. So, can he keep voters, Winston and Fitch happy all at once? Let's ask. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. Good to be with you. Hell of a job you got on your hands there. Well, um, look, I mean, uh, as I've said to you, we're going to use the three weeks up until the counting of the special votes uh, to make sure we're progressing the relationships and the arrangements with the respective parties. And we've also been working hard, actually, just with transition arrangements between the incoming and outco out outgoing and incoming governments as but, well. But the, in terms of what Fitch has said, you, yeah. you're, you're sticking to that surplus date and nothing's going to push you yeah, out and that's that. Yeah, and that's why we released our fiscal plan, you know, before the election, or, you know, and that was important. Uh, those numbers, you know, that we've committed to and that track is what we've, we've locked in. Uh, and we know it's tough uh, because we're actually inheriting a hell of a mess, to be honest with mm. you, and also inheriting some commitments that are made in those first two of those four years. Uh, so it's important that we, you know, we know, we understand the reality of what the rating agencies are looking for. So is there stuff that, you, you mentioned some programmes that have been committed in the first two years, you're looking at stuff to get rid of, basically, so that you can stick to your track? Well, it's just making, I mean, what happened was um, a lot of programmes were committed to by the, by the outgoing government that actually weren't necessarily fully funded, or there was what we call um, fiscal cliffs, uh, where all of a sudden you know, Farm Act wasn't fully funded and then it was sort of added in last minute. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things like that were taken out of subsequent in the first two years. Uh, and that's why it's, you know, we're pretty much on the similar track, but we're locked in for delivering the surplus in 2027. OK. Is it, do you find it odd that, because we had David Seymour on the show yesterday and he told us that he hasn't spoken yet with Winston. Do you think that's weird? Oh, look, again, I know it's different and I know it's frustrating for you guys in particular in the media because we are, I'm wanting to do it very differently. I just don't feel having those coalition conversations and negotiations through the media is a good way to deal with it. I know, but the fact that they're not having any conversations... Is that, I guess, is that normal? Oh, again, I just think, yeah, I'm working with the individual parties uh, involved. It's important um, that I want to build goodwill and respect on, on all sides. I think it's important we get a foundation of good chemistry, of good trust, of good relationships in place. But I guess uh, the point is the arrangements. That there would be no chemistry if they haven't even spoken. Yeah, we've got a process in place, and I just, um, I just trust, so trust the process. So drinks are coming. <laughs> trust the process. <laughs> there's going to yeah. be some Friday drinks or something. <laughs> um, or, if, or you don't drink, actually, so yeah. there won't be. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the promise that Seymour made on our programme yesterday, because I asked him about the document, the coalition document that Labor had with Winston Peters' uh, pre-2017 agreement. They always kept it secret. National blasted them for this, said it shouldn't be a secret document. Please, can we have it released? Do you promise to release, because Seymour promised our programme yesterday that he would, yeah. all documents that were drafted and finalised in terms of what agreements you might have with each party, post it? Because I understand why you've been quiet now, yeah. but can the public expect that level of transparency after the fact? Well, I think we should make those coalition agreements um, you know, publicly available. I think that's important. Um, but again, at the moment, my focus is on forming a strong, stable government. But um, but yes, I mean, that's... That You'll promise be... to do that to, yeah, with the, both parties? Yeah, I think the coalition agreement should be made available to the public. OK, and what about the precursors to it? Because Labor did release the coalition agreement, but there was a 33-page document that they, she signed as Labor leader, which she didn't have to release. Yeah, look... Do anything like that? Well, I, I, I'm not sure that's helpful, but I mean, but we don't have huge documents like that in, in our conversations you know, at this point in time anyway. But what, what I'm saying is, at the end, uh, it should be very transparent and available to the New Zealand public exactly what's been committed to. All right. I think it's important. The mini budget before Christmas. Yeah. Are we looking like that we'll be able to do that? Yeah, look, I mean, as I said, our focus is still on, you know, strong, you know, forming a strong, stable government, but I think it is important that we will look to do a mini budget before Christmas. Um, there is the, what's called the half yearly economic um, fiscal update. Uh, and I think what we do alongside that is have a small number of spending and savings commitments and decisions that actually we would you know, quickly be getting on with um, to actually just you know, make sure that that's moving in the right direction. And then obviously setting up for the major budget in May. When's that coming out? The, uh, it yeah. comes out in December. December, that's yeah. right. All right, so we can expect some kind of Yeah, so of it'll, be, it'll, just be, it'll be, it'll be you know, small in scale, uh, but actually it's just quickly saying, right, oh, we think we can make these adjustments now, and if we can lock and load those in quickly, um, we'll do that. Are you looking at, and I actually don't know whose jurisdiction this is, I assume the government has some say, but at um, the, the length 
length of holiday that our politicians are going to have this summer yeah. when they come back to work. Are you going to make the, try and get our, our parliament up and cranking and yes. making changes? Yes, I am, because I think you know, when the New Zealand people work through to the 21st or 22nd of December, uh, rather than government you know, shutting down on the 14th or something like that, uh, I plan to go right up to Christmas. Uh, and then we're just working out when the right start-up date will be as well. Right, uh, so but we've, we've got a lot to do. Yeah. We'll be under new management and we've got to go to work for the New Zealand people. And so um, I don't understand why... If I look at last year, for example, and, and coming from outside, um, you know, we stopped on the 14th or 16th of December by the time we actually started up after Waitangi Day and then we had the cyclones and we never got back to Parliament, I think, to early March. And so, you know, we've got a lot to get on with um, and get cracking with. So, so goodbye Christmas. Well, not, not Christmas Day, but... Yeah, yeah, right up until 21st. 21st and then back like in, in mid-January or something. Yeah, I think so. That's probably where my head's at. All right. I think people pro probably like the sound of that, to be honest with you. Um, well, that's what every other New Zealander does, don't they? They can say, why shouldn't our parliamentarians well, do the same thing? I have to say, we do go off here quite early, yeah, don't yeah. we? Well, well apart from you. I mean, you're sitting on a beach in the Bahamas or wherever you go, <laughs> complaining about the bus lanes and doing your hey, Miley, oh, Cyrus, yeah. <laughs> Miley Cyrus impersonations. I mean, like, that's where you're probably convicted all. Actually, yeah, the bus How lanes. How many months do you get off <laughs> <laughs> you see, you started it. I know, I shouldn't have gone there. Um, we get up early in the morning, all right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, the bus lanes, we've been, lots of feedback about this this morning. I don't think anyone's against bus lanes, but yeah. you just feel like they put them in dumb places. Yep, I agree. <laughs> yep. Do you agree? Yep, absolutely. And Will that's you why, stop that? Well, that's why Simeon Brown has done a very good job of reallocating the money uh, that has actually been going into cycleways being in, in silly places and, and buses in some, some places as well, so that we can actually get the roads built, which is really the priority to remove congestion and get people moving. All right. Hey, we will leave it there. Thank you very much for coming in this morning. <laughs> Good to see you. Great guys. to see you. That's the incoming Prime Minister and National Leader, Christopher Luxon, eight away from seven.